Around 40 years ago, a rather interesting study occurred at Stanford University. Participants were asked to read studies about the death penalty, specifically its role as a crime deterrent. They were given two studies, one study that supported the death penalty and another that opposed it. The researchers found that the participants agreed with the study that supported their stance on the death penalty. In other words, those who were in favor of the death penalty agreed with the study that supported it, and those who were against the death penalty agreed with the study that opposed it. In addition, the researchers also found that the participants found ways to discount or disqualify the study that went against their opinion. For example, they critiqued the research methodology. So this seems pretty problematic. Despite being presented with two studies of equal merit, people were finding ways to support one and discount the other. So why does this happen? The answer is confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is the tendency we all have to interpret evidence in ways that favor our existing beliefs and expectations. So in the case of the Stanford study, the participants were interpreting these studies about the death penalty in ways that favored their stance on the death penalty. So why is this important? Well, we need to consider that confirmation bias can actually be helpful. It allows us to process the tons of information we come across every day. But on the flip side, we also need to consider that it's part of our everyday lives. Every single time we process new information, our brain is subconsciously either prioritizing or discarding the information, depending on our beliefs in regards to it. So therefore, confirmation bias plays a very large role in reading the news. Look, I'm clearly not a Stanford professor, but I do read the news addictively. And when I learned about confirmation bias and examined the way that I read the news, I realized just how large of an impact it has. When we're reading the news, confirmation bias plays a very large role in the sources that we choose to read. So let's say you're scrolling through Google News or Apple News. It is likely that you'll end up choosing to read an article from a source that you believe will confirm your opinion on whatever topic the article is on. The worst thing is, is that these news sites are aware of this and are actively exploiting it. We are stuck in what is known as a filter bubble. A filter bubble is when a site's personalization algorithms filter out any information that might oppose your beliefs so that you only see things that confirm your beliefs. So great. Not only is our mind actively working to make sure we're only processing and seeing information that confirms our beliefs, but even our news sources are doing that for us too. This means that we're often only seeing one side of the coin. In the case that we don't completely understand the topic at hand, because they tend to be more complex than one article may be able to present. Therefore, we might not have the most nuanced opinions about those topics. In order to change that, and in order to overcome that, we need to accomplish a mindset shift. Given that we live in a democracy, it is our responsibility as citizens to be as informed about the public policies and the current events that shape our lives. And reading the news is supposed to be the way for us to do that. So in order to become more informed and to overcome our confirmation bias, we need to understand that our greatest priority when reading the news should be to get the greatest possible understanding of the topics at hand, even if that means experiencing some discomfort. However, this is not as easy as it seems. When I can tell you when I personally read the news, I can remind myself that my priority should be to understand the topic as much as I can, but then when I start reading, I'll fall into the track of just reading from sources that confirm my opinions. And in my defense and in our defense, reading from sources that confirm our opinions feels great. You might feel like the guy on the left. You're sitting there, you're nodding your head, you're smiling to yourself because there's people out there who agree with you. Someone spent time to write an article about it that cites facts and opinions. 
And there's other people who are also reading the article across the country or across the world who also share the same opinion as you. It's reaffirming and it's comforting. But then, on the other hand, reading from articles and sources that go against your opinion does not feel fun. It feels bad. You feel like the guy on the right. You might sit there thinking to yourself, how could they possibly write this? This is so wrong. And yet this feeling of discomfort and irritation is exactly what we want to overcome. In order to do that, we need to shift from passively reading the news to actively analyzing it. The first step to doing that is to check out a media bias chart. This chart places sources not only in terms of their partisan bias, but also in terms of their overall reliability. I highly recommend this chart. You can find it on Google. It'll be the first one you find if you Google media bias chart. In general, we should try to avoid news sources from this box. News sources in this box contain information that is, goes from propaganda to purely misleading information. And if our goal is to get as informed as possible, reading from, that, reading from those sources will only hurt us. So now that we've become more acquainted with the media bias chart, we can move on to the example. So let's say you were a conservative who was interested about reading about the Trump impeachment. So while this is from February of last year, it's actually a really great example of this. So the first step after identifying a topic that you're interested in reading about and a source that you're normally comfortable with reading from is to go to that media bias chart and identify where that source lies. Many people are aware of the fact that Fox News is conservative and have some general understanding of, an, of a source's partisan bias, but understanding where exactly a source falls will be helpful later on in the process. So now that we've identified where Fox News is with that red circle and the arrow, we can move on to reading the article. And so it's not in the red box, so we're all good. So we can go on to reading the article. And when reading the article, we want to pay attention to a couple of key details. We want to pay attention to the data and the evidence that is being cited, to the quotes and who they're attributed to, and also to the main phrases in the main sentences and in the quotes. So I've taken out a chunk of that article that I think demonstrates this really well and highlighted the important parts for you. So the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, when describing the impeachment process, calls it a political loser for the Democrats and a colossal mistake. And the article goes on to explain that it backfired politically for the Democrats. In addition, the article also adds that there's record high approval numbers for Donald Trump. All of this language is very charged and seems to indicate a massive victory for the Republicans and a huge loss for the Democrats. We should also note that they cite a Gallup poll. And in general, we want to always go back to our primary sources because even the way an article writes about a primary source can affect the way we understand it. In this case, they refer to Trump's polling numbers as record high. So if we go back to the Gallup poll, we can see that the record high polling numbers they're referring to are the, is that 49 at the very end with that red arrow on it. The issue is, is that they refer to it as record high, but for some people who might not be aware of President Trump's polling numbers, they might not have the context to understand just how large of a jump it is. They might think it's up to, let's say, 70%. But looking at this chart gives us that useful context to understand what exactly the phrase record high refers to. So now that we understand a bit more about this Fox News article, we can move on to the next step. We want to go back to the media bias chart, identify again where Fox News lies, and then identify another source, this time across from the political spectrum and across the chart, hopefully around the same distance from the center. In this case, Slate News is a perfect example of that in regards to Fox News. So we go to Slate's website, we find an article about the same topic, and probably unsurprisingly, it has a completely different stance on the topic. They say that the fact that the vote was bipartisan darkens the stain on Trump's record and certifies the egregiousness of his behavior. And they say it'll actually lead to marginal but decisive problems for Trump, specifically with independent voters. Now, this is really interesting. Earlier we had Fox News telling us that this was a huge win for the Republicans. And then here we have Slate telling us, no, this is actually going to be a problem for the Republicans in the future. So, what can we do with these two conflicting pieces of information? 
This brings me to the last step and my personal favorite. We want to try and prove ourselves wrong and find where the two articles agree. So going back to the first step where you establish that you're conservative and you're reading Fox News, and that's kind of where your confirmation bias is pushing you. Maybe your initial feelings and reactions towards reading that article is that, yeah, the Republicans had a huge win. But then after reading from the Slate article and seeing where the two might agree, we might qualify that statement and add a qualification such as, while the Republicans had a large win in the short term, in the long term it might be indicative of some problems to come because the Republicans are not united. Adding that level of qualification introduces more nuance into our understanding of current events. It's not like our current events and our political opinions are entirely black and white. And so going through this process will help us understand that gray area a little bit more. Look, I'm not going to tell you that this is necessarily an easy, or doesn't, uh, easy process or doesn't take any time. But I will tell you that, like anything else, it takes practice. And then when you finally get it and can work it into your news reading habits, it's really rewarding because you really can delve into that gray area. A quick tip, if you're feeling apprehensive about this and think it'll take too much time, is to start doing this only for topics that you're personally passionate passionate about or really invested in, because you'll be able to see the benefits to it more immediately. And hopefully, you can phase it into your daily news reading routine until you can become like me, wasting way too much time reading the news. Thank you. <laughs>